this is it for detective's assistant. The last thing is the author's note. Um, it's quite a bit, it's a long author's note. Um, I haven't read it or anything. I'm reading it for the first time with you guys, but um, I'm kind of curious to see what it's about because a lot of this seemed to be based in some trueness. Like I was talking about at the end of the last video on how he was, um, President Lincoln was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth and he, a lot of this was factual. So take a look at this, it says this. The detective's assistant is a work of fiction, and Nell Warren exists only in the pages of this book. But Kate Warren was a very real person. She and the characters of Alan Pinkerton, Timothy Webster, Hattie Lawton, George H. Bangs, and of course, Abraham Lincoln were living, breathing contributors to America's history. Their lives and actions were the inspiration for this story, and inspired by. The life of Kate Warren requires its own detective work to piece together. Her gravestone tells us she was born in Chemung County, New York, but little else can be found of her life before she entered Alan Pinkerton's National Detective Agency office as a 23-year-old widow. Husband died. And while Pinkerton kept extensive files on his cases and his operatives, Chicago's Great Fire of 1871 destroyed most of his records. That's a nice survived book. When Kate Warren became the first female detective in the United States on August 23, 1856, Pinkerton was doing something almost unheard of, hiring a woman to do what was then seen as a man's job. Aside from mind-numbing factory work or running a boarding house, there were very few employment options for single or widowed women. <clears throat> Let's see who says this. Pinkerton says this. I finally became convinced that it would be a good idea to employ her. True, it was the first experiment of the sort that had ever been tried, but we live in a progressive age and in a progressive country. I therefore determined at least to try it, feeling that Mrs. Warren was a splendid subject with whom to begin. Pinkerton recalled in his book, The Expressman and the Detective in 1874. She succeeded far beyond my utmost expectations. By one of the few accounts in her own words to survive, from Herndon informants, letters, interviews, and statements about Abraham Lincoln, we see that Kate Warren had a determined personality and was no pushover. In order to protect Lincoln on his train ride through deadly Baltimore, it was crucial that Kate arrange sleeping compartments together at the back of the train. But this was not an easy task. Any person could take a berth where they pleased. I gave the conductor half a dollar to keep my berths, and by standing right by myself, we managed to keep them. The most we can learn about Kate Warren comes from Pinkerton's accounts of the many exciting cases he and his detectives solved. While the cases presented in this novel are works of fiction, they are inspired by her real exploits, which can be found in Pinkerton's books. The Somnambulist and the Detective, The Murderer and the Fortune Teller, and The Spy of the Rebellion, along with The Expressman and the Detective. Cool. Kate Warren felt sure she was going to win, Pinkerton wrote in The Expressman and the Detective as they closed in on Mr. Maroney's stolen money. She always felt so, and I never knew her to be beaten. But Pinkerton's experiment with female detectives was relatively brief, and if a girl like Nell wanted <coughs> excuse me, to follow in Kate Warren's footsteps, she would have found those doors quickly slammed shut. Pinkerton's son Robert, who took over the business, disbanded the Female Detective Bureau in 1876, despite his father's angry protests. Women would not be hired for police or detective work, unt again, until the next century. So that means for at least 25 years, women would not be hired to do detective or police work. Pinkerton doesn't hold back praise for what he calls his two finest detectives, Kate Warren and Timothy Webster. Mrs. Warren was the first lady whom I'd ever employed, he writes in The Somnambulist and the Detective. As a detective, she had no superior, and she was a lady of such refinement, tact, and discretion that I never hesitated to entrust her some of my most difficult undertakings. Her undercover role as Mrs. Barling in particular was key to successfully thwarting the Baltimore plot, which was the most important case of Pinkerton's long career. The coded telegraph that appears in the book upon Lincoln's safe arrival in Washington is an exact message that Pinkerton sent out heralding their triumph. Okay, so we did, I didn't show it to you before, but I'll show it to you now. So it says G.H. Bangs, 80 Washington Street, Chicago. Plums, do you see it here? Plums has nuts a ride at Barley All Right. Begun in 1850, the Pinkerton National Detective Agency quickly gained national prominence for catching train robbers and solving bank heists. The Pinkerton name came to mean private eye or private investigator. And the company's logo of an unblinking eye with the phrase, we never sleep. Remember that from the very beginning? 
was nationally recognized, meaning people knew that symbol all over, all over the United States of America. Pinkerton has written that Kate Warren never slept a wink during the train ride delivering Lincoln through Baltimore, just as the logo promised. We never sleep. The hard work of Kate Warren and the other operatives in protecting Lincoln leading up to his March 4th, 1861 inauguration eventually grew into what we know today as the Secret Service, which protects all U.S. presidents. <coughs> Excuse me. That is a real thing, guys. The Secret Service is the security people that guard the president, okay? It's its own special unit. They are the ones that are with the president at all times, and it's their job to keep the president safe. Pinkerton served President Lincoln throughout most of the Civil War, both protecting him from personal harm as well as spying on the South. And his National Detective Agency went on to chase down outlaws over the ensuing decades, including Jesse James, the Reno Brothers, and Butch Cassidy. Those are like famous um, uh, Western, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like crooks, like bad guys. But Pinkerton, Kate Warren, and Timothy Webster were not serving President Lincoln in April 1865 when actor John Wilkes Booth fired the fatal shots in Lincoln's assassination. All right, so remember that um, 1861 was when he was um, elected president and 1865 is when he is shot. By that time, Timothy Webster had already died. At the outbreak of the Civil War, he'd gone undercover as a Confederate soldier of the South. So he was trying to be a soldier from the South. He was pretending. With Hattie Lawton portraying his wife, the bold pair delivered valuable information to the Northern Army. But he was eventually found out and hanged as a spy in April of 1862. He was 40 years old. Hattie Lawton stayed with him until the end, served time in a Confederate prison, then was never heard from again. Kate Warren continued her detective work during the Civil War, working with Pinkerton and posing as a Southern Belle. Like, remember one of those fancy ladies from the South? A master of disguises and false identities, Kate Warren went by many aliases, such as Kay Warren, Kay Warren, and Kitty Warren. She was known to her close friends simply as Kitty. Vibrant and full of life, Kate Warren died in 1868, felled not by a murderer or sworn enemy, but by pneumonia. She was just 35. Oh, man. With no other family to her name, Alan Pinkerton was there by her side. Oh, that just... To this day, you can honor the memories of Kate Warren, Alan Pinkerton, Timothy Webster, and George H. Bangs at Chicago's Graceland Cemetery. Their gravestones can be found all together in the Pinkerton family plot. Very cool. I had no idea this whole time that we were reading the story. You guys, I had no idea that this was based in... In fact, yes, a lot of it was make-believe, but the idea of Kate Warren and Detective Pinkerton being real people, a real agency, and really working on getting him safely, President Lincoln safely, to Baltimore. Very cool. I love it. Um, something else I didn't know, of course, until I got to the end of the book, was that um, there was answers to the different ciphers ciphers okay the little um codes so the last one that i did was in the letter that nell wrote Gemma, and she said this she said but i will tell you that i arrived in washington safe and sound along with a special traveler this individual was and it's written like this lanky and a bit rumpled in appearance intelligent new to washington clever over six feet tall likes butterscotch nice to the ladies and if you spell all of those out it spells Lincoln all right so that was the last cipher that's the end of the book um I really enjoyed it you guys I hope that you did too she even says something else in the end here where it's like if you want to read more she was looking, she says, the author, <clears throat> I was, I love looking at old photographs and poking around in ancient books. If you're as curious as I am about old stories, you might enjoy reading Alan Pinkerton's action-packed action adventures featuring Kate Warren. Look for The Expressman and the Detective, The Somnambulist and the Detective, The Murderer and the Fortune Teller, and The Spy of the Rebellion. I also think it's fun to dig up old newspapers to see what daily life was like. Now that most newspapers are archived online, research has become easier. You can find great nuggets from history, such as the Chicago Press and Tribune description of the Pinkerton detective's threatening genteel rascality that ran on page 166. The account was published January 21st, 1857, though I placed it a few years later in the book. 
I found the Amboy Times description of Abraham Lincoln as crooked-legged on July 24th, 1856 to be hilarious. So that's kind of interesting that she really went back and looked at the author, did a lot of research, and went back and looked at old newspapers from that time. Um, and then she talked just kind of also about some stuff for Abraham Lincoln. And this is just, again, I had just no idea. Yep. I hope that you guys enjoyed it because... I enjoyed reading this story. At first, when I picked it up, I think at the beginning, it was a little confusing, especially like when the first chapter was in which I find myself on the doorstep of a pickled onion. I think we were all kind of like, what's going on? And in the end, great story. And now in the end, it kind of makes more sense. Like it makes sense why there's a train here. And it kind of makes sense here. You can see big boots, fancy outfit. I'm not quite sure what the mirrors. Oh, it's a magnifying glass. Oh my gosh, some of these things are actual clues now, like that hat. That was the one she wore when she was the fortune teller's assistant. It was like a little fez hat that she wore. There's some fake teeth, a mustache. So just kind of the idea of like disguises and stuff. Hope that you enjoyed it. Bye.